In today's video, we get the K-Swap EM2 running. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. God bless you and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider clicking that subscribe button. So this is part three of K-Swapping the EM2 Civic. In a previous video, the only things we were really lacking to get this running was the K-Pro needing sent off to humble performance and the battery relocation wiring hooked up. Um, but we got the package from Humble Performance today, so we're going to go ahead and start opening that first, and then we'll go over the rest. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Now, there's also going to be some pretty important information for the K24 speed sensor stuff to work properly, so please don't skip around, and if you do, definitely go back and check to see what you missed. All right, so we just got this thing shipped off a few days ago, and we already have it back. So they did a pretty good job, pretty quick job at least, on getting it back to us. And this is how... It came back, came with some air bubble wrap, so it's protected. The Honda a tag cover, and of course the cape wrap. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. It says, thank you for your purchase, humble performance. Came with the data logging cable, humble performance sticker, the ECU, it's already notched and ready to go. So all we gotta do is just plug it in and upload the map, which I already have a map made for this. So I'm gonna go over that with you real quick. All right, so if you don't have K-Manager downloaded, it's free on Hondata's website. Uh, we went through and got a base map ready. I'm gonna go through important things with you. The miscellaneous tab has an immobilizer disable or enable. We're gonna make sure it's not clicked so it's not enabled. Going down below that, we have speed sensor, counter shaft driven speed sensor for the TSX. We got that click since it's a full TSX swap. And if you just have a normal K20, you can click the normal speed sensor. They also have no speed sensor, means it'll provide a constant speed signal. So that way you could use launch control and stuff like that. Um, that's what I had to do on the K swapped Mazda B2300 truck. Uh, moving over to the multiplexer, we need to make sure that is normal or enabled um, because this does require the multiplexer to run. It just does not require the immobilizer to run as long as you have K-Pro. Just in these two things here, we would have had to spend an extra $300, but K-Pro has it built in, so we didn't have to. So that's why we went this route as well. Moving to fuel injectors, we have Hunter Tunes 1000 CC. We had to adjust the battery voltage and the dead times. It's right here. Um, he gives you a paper when you get those injectors and you just plug those in and everything's good to go. So now all we have to do is basically just get this thing uploaded into K-Pro, but we need to get K-Pro installed first. Uh, we went ahead and got the battery relocated to the trunk and mounted down. It does not have a battery box yet, but that will be addressed. Uh, we got the wiring ran to the front. I used a connector to connect both of the wires together. Then I soldered the connection and then I electrical taped all the way around it to make a nice solid connection. I got it all tucked out of the way. So now all we have to do is plug K-Pro in and put it behind the glove box. One more thing to make note of is ground wires. Don't forget your ground wires. So I have a ground wire running from the shock tower to the coolant pipe. One, run one from the transmission to the frame and from the valve cover where we have the ECU ground from right here to the shock tower. I have one over there. Also for the power wires, there's two wires that come out of here. Those just need to go right to your alternator. If you're doing the battery relocate all the way to the back, that'll give your car power. So I just wanted to mention that. All right, so as you can see here, we've got everything ready to go. We already ran the primary O2 sensor wiring out. Uh, we have everything hooked up here from the C101 connector to constant 12 volt and stuff like that. Everything's good to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug the ECU in. All right, we got the ECU hooked up and the USB running to K-Manager. Now it does want us to register K-Pro. So we're gonna go ahead, set all that stuff up and then we can upload the tune into the ECU. All right, so now that we've got everything registered, we're just gonna go ahead and turn the key forward. You'll see the green flashing light. That is for the immobilizer. It's one reason we had to disable it. We're gonna go ahead and upload the tune. It's saving, and we can data log and get a live feed 
it should be an error code for an intake temperature sensor because I don't have it hooked up. Very nice. All right. So we are going to start it, but before we do that, I wanted to show you this. So I went ahead and made a bracket for the throttle cable. This is using the factory EM2 D17 throttle cable. I just made a little bracket and hooked it up so the throttle cable actually works now. I also went ahead and drilled and I went ahead and tapped that bolt hole on the cylinder head for the bull boost coolant bypass that goes on the intake manifold since we're running a K20 intake. And we got all of everything else taken care of, topped all the fluids off, got fresh oil and Amsoil oil change. Huge shout out goes to Watson Synthetic for providing the oil for this build and to Brahmin Lube, AKA Best Line. Um, they gave the additive, which I use that in everything because it really does protect your engine inside and out. So all their information will also be in the description. Now this will be its first start. I have not tried starting it with K-Pro. So here we go. so good and the o2 sensor is not hooked up yet for the airflow uh, but yeah definitely runs okay so the reason it's not staying idling is the air idle control valve is not on the bottom of this throttle this one has a block off plate there so it's not going to stay idling until it's warmed up so we basically just have to keep our foot on the throttle right now we need to get an air idle control valve on there for it to run properly and an air intake temperature sensor and then that's it. Everything's looking good. It sounds really healthy. The throttle response is there. And it sounded really crappy on camera because I had the mic hooked up and it distorted the mic. So, uh, but yeah, it definitely sounds good. All the fluid levels are good. So now we just need to see if it'll move under its own power. All right, so it definitely runs and it sounds really good. So now we're going to take it out on the road. I had to put the tag back on and I'm just gonna set you guys up there. Right after I got back, a uh, huge storm picked up, which was weird because it was such a nice day today. Caught us off guard. We had to get everything prepared real fast for that. And then I had to go in and eat. Came out and figured some things out that you guys may need to know if you're gonna be doing an 08 TSX swap with a six-speed manual transmission. So let's go over that real quick. All right, so if you're doing a K20 or K24 swap and using a TSX transmission or an 03 or newer Accord transmission, you'll have a countershaft sensor up front 
this the vehicle speed sensor basically and if you're doing like an o2 to o4 transmission then they should be at the back um, but this particular case if you're going to be doing a k24 transmission you need to hear this you can get this adapter harness for a k20 engine harness and it plugged and plays right into the sensor but one thing to make a note of is if your sensor is missing the two millimeter spacer that goes right here before the transmission it bolts in with a two millimeter spacer behind it if you don't have that it smashes third gear and then the sensor is useless but even if you did decide to put the spacer there and it did work your speedometer would go straight to like 120 as soon as you went five miles an hour now there is a fix for that and i'm gonna go over that with you real quick all right so in order to make this work properly you need to have the b connector which i'll put a pin out on screen the B connector at B11, which is an empty spot, you need to pin that. And in order to do that, you need a pin and a wire. Thankfully, the Jack Spania harness came with extra wires. They're auxiliary wires, just in case. And I chopped one of those, shoved it in the pin, and then I was able to connect it to the Civic side of the C101, which is pin number six, and that is for the speedometer. So it'll go out of the B11 and into the speedometer side. You can basically bypass the whole C101 connector harness and just jump straight to it, but I decided to keep it within the harness um, and get it all put back together. So now the ECU is ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the video clips of that. All right, so on the Jack Spania harness, we have these three auxiliary wires. Basically just gonna chop one of these up and put it in the B11 spot. Right here on the B plug, we count from the top left all the way over until we hit pin 11. And then that is where we're going to pin this in. And now it's pinned. And this will be the output signal from connector B11. This wire will run into the C101 connector and supply the speedometer cluster, the proper signal. So now all we have to do with this B11 wire is take this and tap it in to this blue and green wire, which runs right to the speedometer signal for the speedometer. So it will output out of the B11 spot and into the C101 connector. Now it's not that this is wired wrong, this is just wired up for a normal vehicle speed sensor. So if this was a normal O2 to O4, a K20 swap, it would work perfectly fine as it is. But since this has the counter shaft speed sensor instead of the vehicle speed sensor, we have to do it this way. So through Han data, it will change the voltage output. All right, so looking at Jack Spania's tuck harness with it coming out of the firewall, looking at this C101 connector, if we turn it around, the top left is one, the yellow is two, and three is the purple. So this purple wire is what sends the signal to the speedometer cluster. So if we plug that in, then we go one, two, three, we can see it's this white and green wire. And if we follow that wire all the way to the vehicle side of C101 connector, you'll see that it is right here and that is pin six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we look on this other side of it, that lines up with the vehicle speedometer. So this is the speedometer wire. So basically what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna cut that wire, trim some of it back, and then these two are gonna be connected. So now the output signal is coming from the ECU on connector B11 and jumping straight over to the C101. So this is the vehicle side C101, and that is for like the D17 engine's wiring. And that will connect just like that, and it'll send the signal right up to the cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and get this soldered up and cleaned up. Now, these three wires were just the auxiliary wires on the Jack Spania tuck harness. So these are not needed for anything. You can use these if you ever do like a boost control solenoid. It's already tucked through the harness. So that's why they already have the pins on it, just so you could go right to the ECU. So it was really really good that we had these so we could use it for the B11 plug. Uh, so it's very awesome that Jack Spania provided those extra wires. So we can just tape these up and if we ever need auxiliary wires, we still have some.
All right, so after all that's done, you can go ahead and put this computer in there. Now you will have to trim some of the tabs off in order to get it up in there good, but it does get in there. And make sure to connect your data log cable first, getting all the wires in there, putting all of it back together, getting the glove box back on, and then it should look something like this. And everything's basically done. The only thing we have left to do to this is to get that counter shaft sensor replaced on the transmission because it runs, it drives, it shifts. Uh, the exhaust is loud, so that needs fixed because it's just a real short header that we got off of eBay to get something on there. Um, but Eddie's going to take care of all of that. Uh, we already got the new sensor ordered. It's on its way. Uh, we would have got it locally, but it's a small town. They don't really carry TSX parts in stock, and neither does Paris, Texas, which is the next closest place to me. Um, so we just ordered one. It's actually faster that way to have it shipped to the house. So uh, new one's on its way, but... Yeah, it's definitely together and running, and we'll try to keep you updated as soon as possible. Whenever we get some exhaust and stuff like that, I'll definitely do some update videos for you. But uh, yeah, I hope these K-Swap EM2 videos helped you. If there's something I'm missing, please feel free to message me on Instagram, instagram.com forward slash Texas Honda Channel. I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. I do not know everything. Uh, I'm still kind of learning some stuff along the way as well. Now, I've done two of these K-Swap EM2s. I K-swapped my Mazda B2300, and I've done a lot of other uh, builds in the past. So I do know my way around the motor. So if you do have an issue, please let me know. And uh, one thing I just recommend is grounds. Make sure to check grounds always and fuses. Uh, some of the simplest no-start situations were a fuse or a ground. So I hope that helps you. I'm going to go ahead and get off here and roll my outro. really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that like button. Drop a comment below, share the videos around, and subscribe if you're new here. But I'm going to go ahead and roll my outro, and here it is. I just want to let you know the gospel, which means good news, and the good news is we don't have to live this way no more. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Jesus died and rose again, conquering death for you and I. When he went to the cross, he was thinking of you. No matter what you've done, you're only one step away from the cross. So all you have to do is repent, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus rose from the dead, and you will be saved. And I just pray that this message reaches the right person because I don't know who this message is for. But I just put it at the end of my video and pray that it goes to the right person. So God loves you. He's calling you and he even wrote a love letter to you. Click the Bible link in the description. It's totally free. I get nothing from it other than the fact that you can make it to heaven. And it's not of your good works. It's not of mine. We are only saved through one name above every name. And that name is Jesus. And in the native tongue, it would be Yeshua. And if you want to go all the way back, Elohim, the creator of all, Jesus is calling you. He loves you, and he died for you. That's how serious it is. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of eternal life is through Christ Jesus. All you have to do is accept the gift. If I was to give you the keys to my truck, you couldn't have them unless you took them. Well, the same thing for heaven. Jesus is providing a way out. Everyone is on their way to hell right now on this one path to destruction, and he's providing the way out. It's that simple. God loves you so much. And I pray this message reaches the person it's intended for. Jesus does love you. And if you prayed for a sign, this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and get off here. But I just wanted to let you know this. Jesus does love you. God bless. Stay safe. Stay awesome. Jesus loves you.